Okay, guys. So, um, let me go ahead and scratch this out real quick. All right. So, the way that uh, these problems work is ultimately you have to use a lot of logic. All right. You just got to think about what's going on. There's going to be things in these problems that are undefined, right? Things that aren't really, they have no angle, they have no measurement to them, they have nothing, okay? Um, that's the things that you're going to assign variables to, all right, when you make these equations. So let's go ahead and just look at number one, and hopefully by the time we work through five of these, you understand a little bit better about what you're doing. So, first one, the sum of the angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. So here's the logic part. When you think about a triangle, how many angles are there? There's three angles, okay? Now, do we know the measure of those angles? No, it doesn't say anything about what they actually are. It just says that there's three angles, or it says that it's a triangle, and we know that's three angles. So let's go ahead and call those angles A, B, and C, because like I said, things that are not defined, it doesn't have a definitive measurement. We just know there's three of them. So A, B, and C, and we know that when they're added together, they equal 180 degrees. So again, it says, the sum of the angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. Okay, that's where I get this from. So angle A plus B plus C equals 180. The next thing it says, in a certain triangle, the second angle is twice as large as the first. So we're comparing two angles right now, the first and the second. So let's go ahead and just compare them with an equal sign. B equals A. That's how I like to start it. If I'm comparing two things, I'm going to start it like that. Then it says the second angle, which is B, is twice as large as the first. So sometimes it's easy to figure these things out when you ask yourself questions about them. So here's a good question. How many of the smaller angles is it going to take to equal the bigger angle? So it says the second angle is twice as large as the first, so it's going to take two of the smaller angles to get one of the bigger angles. So it's going to take two of these A's to equal one of those B's. All right, let's look at the third one. That's, that's our equation, that's it. So it's, then the third one says the third angle equals the sum of the other two. Well, we know that sum means addition. Our third angle is C, and that's going to equal the sum of the other two. So the other two angles added together. And those are our three equations. Simple as that. All right, so now let's go on to something a little more complex. Ken has some fives, tens, and twenties. So first of all, look at that word. It's not very, it doesn't just jump off the page. You kind of have to search for it. But look, Ken has some fives, some tens, and some twenties. Do we know how many fives, tens, and twenties he has? We don't. We have no idea. So let's go ahead and assign that a variable. He has some fives. He has some tens. And he has some twenties, X, Y, and Z, okay? Now you can assign it A, B, and C, X, Y, and Z, L, M, N, it doesn't really matter, okay? <laughs> They're just variables. But we do know that altogether he has 30 bills, so however many 5s he has, however many 10s he has, and however many 20s he has, when they're all added together, he's got 30 bills total. Okay, so how much are those bills worth? Well, they're worth $370. All right, so we know that they're equal to $370, all these bills. We know how much a $5 bill is worth. It's worth, it's a simple question, really, $5, right? So that represents how many $5 bills there are, and we need to multiply that by 5 to find out how much money we have. So, for example, if I had 5 $5 bills, no, let's say 10 $5 bills. So if X equaled 10, like I said, X is the amount of $5 bills I have, if I had 10 $5 bills, and I'd have $50 total, just from $5 bills. So we need to make sure we're multiplying, if we're going for cost or how much money we have, we need to make sure we're multiplying our variables by however much they're worth. So for $5 bills, I need to multiply it by five. For my $10 bills, I need to multiply it by 10. For my $20 bills, however many $20 bills I have, it needs to be multiplied by 20. And there's our equation, 5x plus 10y plus 20z equals $370. And then finally, our last one, there are two more 5s than 10s. 
So what are we comparing? We're comparing fives and tens. And like I said, when we compare things, I like to just write it as if they're equal and then ask, okay, well, how much, which one has more? Which one do I have more of? Do I have more fives or tens? Well, it says I have two more fives and tens. So if I have more fives, which is x, than I have of tens, that means I have less tens than fives. That means if I'm gonna have the same amount for x to equal y, I need to add something to this side, right? Because if y is less, if it's gonna equal, if it's gonna equal x, I need to add something to it. So x equals y plus two. I have two more fives than I have tens. That's what that means, all right? If that's confusing, just sit and think about it for a little while. Write some things out on your paper. See if you can figure it out. Because like I said, it's logic, but it's hard to think about it. It's, uh, it's pretty complex. It's not so straightforward. So let's try this next one now. Now it's getting even more complicated. But it's still not that bad. So watch. How many liters of each 8%, 10%, and 20% hydrogen peroxide should be mixed to get 8 liters of 12.5% hydrogen peroxide solution if the amount of 20% solution, so we're talking about solution, used must be 2 liters less than the amount of 8% solution used. Okay, so go back to the top. How many liters of each 8%, 10%, and 20% hydrogen peroxide? So we're asking how many liters. So does it tell us how many liters of 8% we have, of 10% we have, of 20% we have? No. It doesn't say anything about that. That's what we're looking for. So what do you think we're going to assign our variables to? Let's assign them to 8, 10, and 20%. So let's say A is 8%, B is 10%, and C is 20%. And then, so that's the amount of liters I have of each one of those. We don't know how many liters we have. That's why it's a variable, okay? That's going to be equal when we add them all together to our total. Mix to get AP and free AP teachers. You're gonna have to excuse that. We're ready for you in the principal's conference room. Free AP and AP teachers. We're ready for you in the principal's conference room. Thank you. I'm recording these at school, but anyway. Um, so, mix to get eight liters. So, we're trying to get eight liters total. So, that's what we're looking for. When we add however many liters of the 8%, 10%, and 20% together, we should have eight liters total. So that's one equation. Next equation, we have to figure out exactly how much of those. So this is where to get 12.5% uh, hydrogen peroxide. So this is where we start adding on the decimals. So A represents which hydrogen peroxide solution? It represents the 8% solution. So we've got 0.08 times A, we're going to have B represents the 10% solution, so we're going to have 0.10B, how you doing sir? And then also C represents the 20% solution, so we're going to have 0.20C, and that's going to be equal to something. Well, what's our total? Our total should be 8 liters of 12.5%, so watch this. We have percent times amount. We have percent times amount. We have percent times amount. Equals, well, what do you think? Probably percent times amount. So here's 12.5.125 times amount, which is eight. That's where that's coming from, okay? And then our last little bit. So if the amount of 20% solution used must be two liters less than the amount of 8% solution used, okay? so. <coughs> We're talking about amounts. We're not talking about the percents themselves. So these letters right here are representing the amounts, right? That's the amount of, that's how many ounces of solution, right? These letters are representing the amounts. So which letter represents the amount of 20% solution? That's C. And which letter represents the amounts of 8% solution? That's A. All right. Now it says that C, which is the amount of 20% solution used, must be 2 liters less than A. So C equals 2 liters less than A, or A minus 2. And those are our three equations. 
Alright, moving along. Hopefully this video is not too long. I wish I knew how long it's been already. Anyway, let's go ahead and do... Yeah, let's do number four. Alright, the owner of a tea shop wants to make three kinds, so that's important information, three kinds of tea to make a 100 ounce mixture that will sell for 83 cents an ounce. Okay, so we have three kinds of tea. Do we know how much of those three kinds of tea? Nope, we don't know that yet. So let's go ahead and assign our variables to the three kinds of tea. Looks like we're gonna have some, whatever own orange pico is, Irish breakfast, and Earl Grey. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and assign um, variables to these using the second, the beginning letter of each second word. So P, B, and G. All right, so I've got some of this. I've got some orange pico. I've got some B, and I have some G. All right. And I know that all of it added together is ounces, 100 ounces, right? So I have some amount of ounces of P, some amount of ounces of B, some amount of ounces of G. All of them added together is 100 ounces. All right, so that's one equation. Now again, let's add on the cost, because now if we're gonna find out uh, an equation for the cost, then we need to add the cost to each. So the, the P costs 80 cents an ounce. <laughs> so we've got 0 0.80p plus the B costs 85 cents an ounce, 0.85b plus the G costs 95 cents an ounce. 0.95g equals, so again we have cost times amount, cost times amount, cost times amount. Well, what do you think is going to be on the other side? Cost times amount. How much do we want the whole thing to cost? 83 cents. How much? 100 ounces. 0.83 times 100 ounces. All right, and then it says, if he wants to use twice as much orange pico as Irish breakfast, now this is tough. So we're comparing the orange pico, and anytime I'm comparing two things, again, I just set them equal to each other and then ask myself some questions. So orange pico to uh, Irish breakfast. Those are the two things that we're comparing. Oop, I'm sorry. Now I'm throwing out some random variables. So Pico, those are the two things we're comparing. Pico and breakfast, all right? Now it says I want to use twice as much orange Pico as Irish breakfast. So if that's the case, then however many Irish breakfast I have, I need to multiply it by two to find out my orange Pico. Now that probably looks confusing to some people because most people are used to seeing it like this. 2B. All right, those are the exact same thing. All right, two ways of writing the same thing. But I have, for every B, I have two Ps. Pretty much that's how you write that. Two times B equals the amount of Ps that I have. All right, so those are my three equations. Let's go ahead and scratch that one out. So I have P equals 2B, then I have these two up here. All right, one last one. The store lists two notebooks and 13 pins for $8.95. So let's go ahead and do two notebooks plus 13 pins. And we're looking for the cost of a pin in a notebook for $8.95. The reason I know that we're looking for the cost is if you look at this last part, it says, how much do you pay for each? So we're looking for the cost of a notebook, a pin, and then eventually um, a pencil. So on the next equation, we have three notebooks, two pins, plus five pencils. Now I'm going to use the letter E, which is the second letter of pencil for pencils, all right? 5E equals 6.15. And then the last one, I've got seven notebooks plus seven pens plus seven pencils 
equals 1470. And those are our three equations, okay? Now the way we would actually solve these guys, we're gonna learn later, but I'll explain it really quick. We learned how to make, make uh, matrices out of systems of equations. Well, that's all this is. That's a system of equations. There's three equations. If I wanted to make a matrix out of this, I'll just do it right here next to this one real quick. I'd have 2, 13. How many E's do I have on that top equation? Zero. No E's. Then I have 8.95. I have 3, 2, 5, 6.15. And then I have 7, 7, 7, 14.70. There's my matrix. If I put that into the calculator as a 3 by 4 matrix, and I calculate it using the, what is it, RREF, or row reduced echelon form, um, reduced row echelon form, wow, I can't remember the order. Anyway, if I put it in there, plug that matrix in, what I should end up is getting something that looks like this. Sandy Johnson, if you were still on campus, zero, you can come to the zero, floor of the I building. Zero, 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 one, just like that. And then I'll have some numbers over here. And that's going to be what? The number of notebooks, number of pins, and number of pencils in that order. Just like this order right here. Notebooks, pins, pencils. All right? So hopefully that helped, guys. Um, Watch these videos as much as you can. I really appreciate it, and I hope to see you in class soon.